Hi everyone, my name is Tanya Lancaster and I'm with AT&T Cybersecurity. I'm the Director of Product Marketing within AT&T Cybersecurity. If you don't know, AT&T is one of the largest managed security services providers in the world. And we are here today in this session to talk about the use of artificial intelligence in security operations and have a discussion around how it's impacting security operations teams as well as threat intelligence researchers. As we all know, techniques for AI have been around for almost a decade, if not more. And we have been using them historically within AT&T cybersecurity for about that amount of time, especially as it relates to the use of threat intelligence curation. But in 2023, we saw an explosion of new use cases for AI, and certainly we've seen more buzz about it in the media. Of course, AI isn't just one technology. It's a broader umbrella term for software and technologies that include things like machine learning, chat GPT, generative AI, and more. Wherever AI is being used today and tomorrow, however, we have to keep in mind that it's not to be used in isolation. You have to think of AI as the intersection of both technology, people, and process, as well as data. And all of that requires a certain level of governance and supervision. I'm here with Rakesh Shah, who's the AVP of Product Development at AT&T Cybersecurity. Hi, Rakesh. Hello. And we're going to go a little bit more into detail about some of those challenges that AI is helping us to manage through, as well as the future of AI and its impact on the SOC. So Rakesh, let's start with that. Let's start with some of the challenges historically that AI has solved for us in the last 10 years. Yeah, I think the, the challenges that AI solves are really the same challenges that security operations centers or SOCs have been dealing with for a decade, if not longer, right? Um, number one is that there's been an explosion in alerts, right? A lot of it is driven by just the pervasive amount of security tools that are out there. Um, you have many more security tools that are being used by enterprises. Um, even small and medium businesses are using more and more security tools. And all those tools generate alerts. And a security operations center has to go and triage those alerts, investigate them, you know, look for you know, potential threats to the business, and that can just be absolutely overwhelming, right? So you have this like influx and in, in just explosion in alerts that is then burdening the security operations team who has to go through and really understand and go deep into those alerts. And so, you know, those two challenges of alerts and then an overburdened security operations team um, has been around for many years. And we, you know, at AT&T Cybersecurity have been using ML and machine learning to really you know, look at the different threat actors out there. We can take data from all over AT&T's network, um, from, you know, we have a team called Alien Labs. Not only are they using the AT&T data, we also use the Open Threat Exchange where we have over um, 240,000 subscribers who use that to add, you know, threat intel. And it's, you know, really the most popular threat intel sharing site out there. And we use that technology to then inform what kind of threats are out there. And that actually feeds into a lot of our ML models that are then fed into our platforms. And so for us, it's really important to be able to get that full picture so then you can understand that, hey, maybe a threat actor, for example, a nation state or even like a criminal group um, may look like two or three different groups. But when you start using ML, you go, okay, it's actually one group. Or you take an indicator of compromise and you look at it and you go, okay, well, let's take that email address get more context. It's a very manual process for a security analyst, but if you can do that in a more automated way through machine learning, um, really simplifies that. And so we're really excited about how not only what we've done with AI to help security operations, but what we can do in the future. So Rakesh, let's talk a little bit about the future of AI and its use within security operations. Should security analysts and threat researchers be afraid of losing their job to AI? Because we hear this a lot. You know, the first thing I think of, and I think most people think of when they hear AI, is they think of Skynet from the Terminator, right? Oh. So, so I think there's a lot of like, you know, fear and uncertainty, and you know, even when it comes to whether analysts or threat researchers should be afraid, but I, I mean, the answer is no, right? It is a tool, and it's a tool that will help them, so. 
I think it goes back to what we mentioned in the intro, which is AI can't be used in isolation. It's really a combination of people, process, and the technology, at least for today. Exactly. Yeah. So going there, how is at and cybersecurity's security operations centers putting into place use cases today for AI? What are you actively working on within the SOC? Yeah, it's fascinating because you know we have this new technology with ChatGPT, generative AI, and this capability to take you know things that are hard to understand and put them in human readable formats. And so, one example is you know you you get an alert today. Um, as we mentioned, that's one of the biggest challenges. You get too many alerts when there is one that you know you have to investigate. Um, being able to get more context around you know not just like in you know, these esoteric terms, but in a more human readable format, like, hey, I see something coming in from this IP address or from this domain, and it looks like you may, there may be other sources that this is coming from, or it may be related to this other alarm and maybe the same threat actor, but being able to put that in a human readable format really simplifies what an operations, uh, security operations analyst has to do. You also can add in what a threat hunter um, can do where they're actually looking for threats. And today you have to use you know, these kind of complex query languages and maybe tied to a specific security stack. But what would be great is if you could turn that into like a just simple human question, right? Um, what else do you see that's related to this particular alarm or related to this um, threat actor or this indicator of compromise? And so being able to use that to simplify what a SOC can do, that's something we're really looking at and starting to put in place for our security operations teams. And then just something as simple as today when there's an incident or an investigation, um, a security operations analyst can take hours to write that up you know, go through different systems, you know, go through our platform, go through the open thread exchange that we talked about earlier, pull all that to the data together in a single view that can be shared with peers, um, with management, with customers. Um, that's a lot of work, right? But imagine if you could use a tool like ChatGPT and generative AI to write a human readable report, pull all that data in and do it in seconds versus hours. Right there, you've taken the work and we talked earlier about how the security operations teams are just overwhelmed today. Well, if you can simplify that and make their lives easier, they just have to proofread it. These are some examples of things that we are doing today to really make it easier for our security analysts. So being implemented within, say, the next 12 months. Yeah, that's something we're working on for the next 12 months, yes. And just to follow up on that question, is this all being done within the threat detection and response platform? that we use USM Anywhere? Is it centralized within that so an analyst can be looking at the platform and these use cases are actually being in, are in the platform within a, a feature or function? Absolutely, absolutely. That's great, that's, that's great. So as you look to the future, so now beyond 12 months, so let's uh, talk about say 18 to 24 months down the road, where do you see those use cases evolving and expanding? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because just this past weekend, I watched the Mission Impossible movie. And uh, one of the things I love is that they have those augmented reality glasses, right? And so I think that, you know, it's, it isn't just these individual use cases. I think there's a general idea that everything you're doing as a security analyst, right? You're getting more alerts. You're, you know, we're using ML to simplify that. We're using, you know, the AI capabilities like generative AI and chat GPT to make it easier to do that. Um, you take all that in kind of a holistic view and you kind of can turn what an analyst is doing into this kind of augmented reality where everything they're doing is simplified, right? And so we just talked about a couple of use cases, but you can extend that across the board. And so I just think that this idea of augmented reality um, for analysts is kind of the future. And it doesn't mean that they're gonna go and put on their VR goggles and you know, kind of be walking around the office with those. But you know, within our platform, really providing that context, the ability to do things in a human readable format across the board. So contextual enrichment, speeding mean time to detection because we're making those associations between different malware families, different uh, threat actor infrastructure, for example, things like that. So really enrichment of what the analyst is already doing to create efficiency within their job. 
the core value that a security operations center delivers, um, which is you know, the ability to detect threats, um, the mean time to detect the threat, the ability to respond to threats or remediate them, the mean time to remediate. Um, those are you know, really the key operational metrics, right? And that's what AI is gonna help address. So as uh, organizations out there are looking to work with vendors, there's a lot of noise in the market about AI technology, and it is so confusing. It's even confusing for those of us who study the research on this and all the different techniques. So if I'm a security buyer or if I'm uh, looking to work with a vendor who's making claims around AI and the use of AI in their platform, or if I'm working with a service provider who's making claims around the use of AI within their service operations, if you could give just one or two questions that an individual should be asking their vendor as they're doing their research, what would that be? I think first, you, you touched on it earlier, right? If we kind of over-rotate and focus on technology, I think we're missing the point, right? We have to look at process and people and tools all in kind of unison together. And so I think the first question you have to ask is like, okay, wh what are you doing um, with the AI technology? And I think even more so, if you think about the data that's being fed into these AI tools, right? You know, I think of the Spider-Man quote, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, right? And so what are service providers, what are software vendors doing um, with your data, with the data that you provided, the data that is out there not only in the wild, but it's really specific to you. And there's really some you know, potential data privacy and confidentiality issues that you have to be concerned about. And so I think, you know, don't be afraid to ask that question of your service providers and your software vendors. What, what are you doing with my data, right? And then, you know, how are you approaching AI and how are you managing it? So I think that's number one. Um, number two, you know, really, Again, we've talked about technology and we love technology as an industry, especially in uh, cybersecurity, but just in general. Um, getting back to, you know, what do you want from that service provider? What problems are you solving by implementing that software? Start with, you know, in the case of cybersecurity, what are your security outcomes? And the security outcomes will then drive you know, what you want to use the technology for. And again, we touched on this earlier where we talked about, you know, uh, one of the core metrics of a security operations center is how long does it take for them to detect a threat? You know, how long does it take for them to respond to a threat? Um, those are not only what's needed for a security operations center, that's what's needed for a customer, right? So understanding what are your security outcomes? Is it, you know, compliance? Right, is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to you know, meet like a SOX or a HIPAA compliance standard. Um, start with that. And then from there, the questions will follow. And AI is really an augment to help you achieve those security outcomes or your business outcomes. Yeah, I like that you touched on the governance piece. I mean, we could spend an entire hour and a half talking about that alone, but obviously we only have a certain amount of time for this session, and we are coming to the close of the session time. So I wanna first thank you for sharing some of your insights from our AT&T Cybersecurity Operations Centers. And I wanna thank everyone who's joined us today. Um, again, we could have spent two hours talking about this topic. We just uh, hit the tip of the iceberg, but thank you. And hopefully some of the insights that Rakesh has brought today is helpful to you as you move forward in thinking about working with vendors and other service providers who are using AI in their security operations. Thank you, Rakesh. Thank you.